Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I'm one of the authors of Technic.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to configure your local repository and remote repository with the FTP server on Red Hat 8 or Saint OS 8 system. All right, so if your system is not subscribed and you need to um, download packages, what you can do is to configure the YUM local repository. And you can also configure the FTP, FTP based um, remote repository so that you can always have clients or other servers pointing to this um, FTP based server and they can always download packages from it. All right. And um, quick one if you're going to be writing the RHCSA8 exam or the SUSE Linux exam, you can just scroll down to the end of this website and click on the practice questions of the exams you want to write, all right? So I'm always um, updating this website from time to time. The first thing you need to do is to get the ISO to your system. You can use FileZilla or any other FTP utility. So in my case, I'm using FileZilla, all right? I'm just going to get the ISO into my system. I'm going to put it in slash media. You can put it anywhere you have space, all right? So I'm just going to drag it and put it here. I'm going to wait for the upload to complete. The transfer is complete, so I'm going to check my system. Oops. So I don't think it's in media. Let me check the filezilla and see where the ISO was dropped again. So I think it's in root. All right, so this is the ISO file. Apparently it was dropped in, in the root directory, home directory. So the next step to do is to mount the ISO to any mount point, all right? So I can just mount this to slash MNT. The ISO image is mounted. Let's verify this so we can see that it's mounted, all right, on MNT. The next step is to um, make a directory so that you can copy the ISO files in that directory. You can copy the ISO files in any path you wish to copy it to, but I'm just going to make a directory called ISO files, all right? So I'm going to copy everything in the mount directory. So I'll copy all of this to the ISO files directory. So I'm just going to do I think reboots and archive. All right. It's going to take a while because it's uh, about 8.1 gig. The copy is complete, so let's check the ISO files. So you can see the um, ISO packages here in this file. Okay, so let's create the local repository file, All right? and call this um, ISO files or any name I wish to call it. This is different from the um, RHEL 7. In RHEL 8, you need to configure two base URLs, one for the app stream and one for the base OS, unlike the one we did when we uh, configured the local repository for RHEL 7. All right, so I'm just going to copy everything I have on the website and paste it here. I'm going to be dropping the link to the website in the description section below. You can as well copy it too. And if you want to understand every parameters we have here, you can go through the course, the RHCSA course, and know what all of this means. So briefly, um, this, you can use any name here. And this is the base URL, all right? And the base URL is file. We're pointing to the ISO files and we are pointing to the upstream package file. And this is a GPG check, which is zero, right? And the name, you can give any name in here. 
So I'm just using Red Hat Ent Linux app stream and enable here is one. So the same thing here as well. You can give any name here. The base URL, it needs to point to the ISO files because this was the directory we created where our packages are, right? And it also needs to point to the base OS. The GPG check, right, it can be zero. The name too can be um, any name you wish to give and enable us to be one. So I'm just going to save the file. So I'm going to test our configuration. You can use DNF, DNF repo list or YUM repo list, whichever one box. You can see the repo ID here and you can see the packages that we have. So the configuration is working. So this is how you configure your YUM local repository on Red Hat 8 system. You can install whatever package you want to install. So in this case, we're going to install the VSFTPD server. So the service is dead. We're just going to start the service. Let's check again. All right, so the VSFTPD service is running. The next step is to copy the ISO packages to the document root of the um, VSFTPD service, which is slash var slash FTP slash pop. Let's clear the screen. I'm going to copy this to slash bar slash FTP pop. This is about eight point one gigs, so it's going to take a while. So let's confirm the file. All right, so you can see that it's in a public um, directory, which is the default document route for FTP, for VSFTPD service. Let's allow anonymous user for the um, VSFTPD service. So we need to do that in the configuration file. So we need to change this to yes. I'm just going to restart the service. Let's allow the FTP service in the firewall rule. I'm going to reload firewall. All right, so let's go to the client server and try to point the configuration file, the YUM configuration file to the FTP server here. Quick one, before we go to the client, let's check the context type of the file. So I'm sure that, okay, so you can see that it's unlabeled. So we need to, <coughs> sorry, we need to relabel this. So because um, SE Linux would prevent us from accessing the server. So we need to relabel this.
All right, so let's confirm again. Okay, so it's now really built. Sometimes you need to use the recursive command to, to be very sure that um, every context is rightly really built. So I'm going to do this so that we can be very sure of what we're doing. All right, so I have taught um, SA Linux in one of the average CSA8 course. I explicitly um, explained what SA Linux is. I, we did SA Linux troubleshooting. I explained SA Linux with examples. So if you're conf still confused about SA Linux, you can check through that course and go through it. You would understand everything about SA Linux. All right, so let's go to the client and point the configuration file, the YUM configuration file to the server. So this is our client. We're going to create the yum configuration file in the yum.repos.d. And call this any name. So I'm just going to say remote.repo, but make sure that it has the extension.repo. All right. So I'm just going to copy the parameters in the on the website here. I've already explained what it is, all right? So I'm going to be dropping the link to the website in the description section below. So if you want to copy it as well. So the most important thing you should uh, be conversant about here is the base URL. This time around, it has changed to FTP. And we're pointing to the FTP server. This is the IP of the FTP server, right? Sometimes you can also use the FQDN. You just specify it here and the public and the you're pointing to the ISO files, we're pointing to the upstream packages. Then for this other one too, we're pointing to the base OS packages, right? So I'm just going to save this file. So let's confirm our configuration. All right, so you can see that everything is working fine. This is the repo ID and these are the RPM packages, all right? So this is how you configure an FTP-based um, repository and a YUM local repository on Red Hat 8, all right? If you wish to install any package, you can just do that. I can do VSFTPD or HTTPD. All right, but I'm not going to install any package. Okay, so thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel. Bye for now.